Hey folks, Dave Couples here with you again. Uh, in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about the elect in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 31. Uh, who are the elect? And of course, that's a very popular passage. It's hotly debated on the YouTubes nowadays. Uh, some folks just aren't sure. Uh, but of course, the King James Bible makes it crystal clear who the elect are. Now, of course, our post-tribulation rapture of opponents, our post-tribulation pre-wrath rapture of opponents, uh, they're going to try to tell you that the elect in Matthew 24, 31, they're going to try to tell you that that elect is a New Testament church. Uh, but of course, nothing could be further from the truth. Of course, in Matthew chapter 24, uh, you are in the Olivet Discourse. And of course, in the Olivet Discourse, uh, you are in the 70th week of Daniel. Uh, and of course, the 70th week of Daniel is not about the New Testament church, but of course, the 70th week of Daniel uh, is for the people of the prophet Daniel. Uh, the 70th week of Daniel is for the nation of Israel. And of course, you get that in Daniel chapter 9. Seventy weeks are appointed uh, for the people of the prophet Daniel and for the holy city. That holy city, of course, is going to be Jerusalem. Uh, so, of course, there is no New Testament church. There is no body of Christ. There is no new birth uh, for 50,000 miles in any direction that day on the Mount of Olives when the, Lord, when the Lord spoke those words in Matthew chapter 24. Of course, in Matthew chapter 24, you're looking at a Jewish Messiah talking to a bunch of Jewish disciples... Uh, as in a bunch of pork abstaining, uh, Sabbath observing, temple attending, law of Moses keeping, Jews. Uh, that is what you are uh, looking at in Matthew 24. The Lord's disciples there at that time are a bunch of Jews under the Old Testament. Uh, so again, he's, it's a Jewish Messiah talking to a bunch of Jews uh, about the Jewish 70th week of Daniel. That's what you see in Daniel 9. Uh, and there, when it talks about gathering together as elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other, uh, there in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 31, that just might be the most prophesied event in the entire King James Bible. You say, what event is that? Uh, that might be the most prophesied event, and that event is gathering a bunch of Jews back to the land of Israel. That just might be the most prophesied event in the entire King James Bible. Now, of course, at the end of the 70th week of Daniel, at the second coming of Christ, when the Lord comes for Armageddon, that's exactly what you're looking at uh, in Matthew chapter 24. Uh, and, of course, a clear cross-reference for that is going to be Matthew chapter 24 and verse 28, where it says, Whithersoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Uh, and, of course, that's eagles being gathered together for the supper of the great God that you see in Revelation chapter 19, verse 17 and 18. And, of course, you're going to get that a little bit more in the latter portion of Ezekiel 39, where it talks about not only birds, but also beasts. Also beasts being gathered uh, to that supper of the great God, where they're going to feast on the corpses, on the carcasses of the soldiers uh, of Armageddon. And so, of course, the Holy Spirit, uh, he's very careful to place that passage uh, in the Olivet Discourse for you. Again, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 28, to show you that that account of the coming of Christ in the Olivet Discourse, of course, is the coming of Christ at the end of the 70th week when the Lord comes for Armageddon. Whithersoever the uh, carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. That is what Matthew chapter 24, verse 28 says. And so again, that tells you that the coming of Christ in Matthew 24 is the second coming at the end of the 70th week of Daniel when the Lord comes for Armageddon. When you compare that passage, Matthew chapter 24, verse 28, compare that with Revelation chapter 19, verse 17 and 18. And again, also, you're going to get a little bit more about that in the latter portion of Ezekiel 39. Uh, so of course, uh, if you want more information on that, how that the coming of Christ in the Olivet Discourse most certainly is the second coming of Christ at the end of the 70th week of Daniel, uh, go check out a video on my channel called Putting the Post-Tribulation Pre-Wrath Rapture to Bed with a Shovel Night-Night, uh, and you're going to get plenty of information on that. Uh, so again, um, the coming of Christ in Matthew 24, it's the second coming at the end of the 70th week, and at that time, there are several gatherings uh, that do occur. Uh, and of course, not one of them is going to be the New Testament church being gathered for the rapture. Uh, again, the rapture of the church, uh, that takes place before the 70th week of Daniel gets underway. You run into all kind of problems putting the rapture of the church at the end of the 70th week, trying to make that occur at the same time as that first resurrection that's mentioned at the beginning of Revelation 20. And if you want more information on that, go check out a video on my channel called The Satanic Deception of a Post-Tribulation Rapture. Uh, and you'll get plenty of information on that. So, of course, it does not fit 
you bust your neck coming through the King James Bible several times uh, trying to make that rapture uh, for, of the New Testament church, trying to make that at the end of the 70th week of Daniel. It does not fit the bill. Uh, but of course, there are several gatherings at that time when the Lord comes at the end of the 70th week of Daniel. Again, we already talked about one where the eagles and the beasts and the fowls are gathered together for the supper of the great God. Again, you get that in Matthew 24, verse 28, Revelation 19, verse 17 and 18, uh, and again in the latter portion of Ezekiel 39. That's going to be one gathering. Uh, and then, of course, you've got the soldiers being gathered together for Armageddon. You're going to get that uh, in the sixth vial uh, in Revelation 16. Toward the end of Revelation 16, in that sixth vial, uh, you see the soldiers being gathered for Armageddon. That's another gathering going on at that time, uh, at the end of the 70th week of Daniel. Uh, and then on top of that, in Matthew chapter 25, in verse 31 to 46, you have another gathering. And this, of course, is also going to be a gathering of Gentiles. Uh, and this one will take place just after Armageddon. Evidently, not all the Gentiles are going to war uh, at Armageddon. Uh, so in Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 to 46, you have the judgment of the nations. It says, when the Son of Man comes to sit upon the throne of his glory, that, of course, is the second coming at the end of the 70th week, before the Lord will be gathered all nations, and he will separate them. Uh, he will separate them as sheep uh, being separated from goats. Uh, and, of course, the goats go into everlasting fire, and the sheep go into that millennial kingdom. Uh, and, of course, there, in the judgment of the nations, those Gentiles are not uh, judged. They're not judged for whether or not they got born again. They're not judged for whether or not they placed their faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. But what that King James Bible very clearly, very plainly says to anybody that can just read the words and accept what the words say, it says they are judged for how they treated those Jews when those Jews will have gone into captivity for the duration of the second three and a half years of the 70th week of Daniel. And we're going to get into that in a little bit in this video. Uh, so, of course, you have another gathering right there, a gathering of Gentiles that will have survived the 70th week of Daniel. Uh, and if they treated those Jews right at the end of the week, uh, they will be able to go into that millennial kingdom. And so that's a third gathering that we've mentioned here that it all occur, all three of these gatherings occur at the end of the 70th week, uh, just before that millennial kingdom gets underway. But there is, in fact, another gathering. Uh, and again, this gathering just might be the most prophesied uh, event in the entire King James Bible. Uh, there's more prophecies about this uh, gathering. Uh, there's more prophecies about this gathering than the virgin birth, the crucifixion of Christ, and the resurrection of Christ combined. Uh, and this gathering, of course, is a gathering of those Jews back to the land of Israel. Uh, this is going to be, it just might be, it just might be the most prophesied event in the entire King James Bible. Uh, I reckon the only, the only prophecy that might give it a run for its money uh, is prophecy specifically about the second coming of Christ. Uh, of course, you could say on some level, that prophecy about the Lord gathering those Jews back to the land of Israel and causing them to go into that millennial kingdom, you could say on some level uh, that those prophecies, again, about gathering those Jews back, those could also be prophecies about the second coming of Christ uh, because, again, that does occur at the second coming of Christ. That's what we're going to get into in the video. Uh, and so when we're talking about prophecies, uh, when we're talking about a prophecy that might be prophesied more than those Jews being regathered back to the land of Israel, uh, we're talking about that second coming of Christ specifically, just about him coming. That might be the only, and again, it might be, it might not be, but it might be uh, the only other uh, prophecy in the Word of God that has prophesied more times than the prophecy uh, about those Jews being regathered back to the land of Israel. Uh, so I count, I count 49, I count 49 times that prophecy is prophesied of in that King James Bible. Uh, where it talks about those Jews. And when we talk about Jews, we're talking about the seed of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. Uh, when we're talking about Jews, we're talking about the house of Israel. Uh, and of course, you wouldn't have to mention that, but of course, uh, many of our post-trib pre-wrath opponents, uh, these that clearly don't know their Bibles from their oatmeal, uh, they're not sure when they come across that word Israel, they're not sure exactly who that's talking about. Uh, they, of course, have subscribed to Satan's theology. Uh, excuse me, I can't I keep saying Satan's theology. I mean replacement theology. Replacement theology. Uh, these fellows, they subscribe to replacement theology, and so they're trying to steal the blessings uh, from national ethnic Israel that they have coming to them in the future. And they're trying to take those blessings and appropriate those blessings unto themselves, under the New Testament church. Uh, and so now when they read that word Israel in prophecy, they're not sure exactly what that word means. 
Uh, but of course, as Bible believers, uh, we know exactly what that word means. That word Israel, coming through the Old Testament, that literally means Israel. When it's talking about Israel in the future 70th week of Daniel, guess what? The word says what it means, and it means what it says. It means Israel. Uh, and so, of course, that just might be the most prophesied event in the entire King James Bible, uh, is those Jews, uh, uh, again, the house of Israel, uh, being gathered or regathered back to the land of Israel. Uh, I have a community post on my channel. Uh, I don't have too many community posts there, it's just a couple, just a handful. Uh, so it wouldn't be hard to find. But if you went over to the community posts on my channel uh, and you found that post where I have uh, written up all the times that I found that prophecy prophesied in a King James Bible, uh, again, those Jews being regathered back to the land of Israel, you would find not nine. You would find not 19, you would find not 29, you would find not 39 times, but I found 49 times that prophecy is mentioned in the King James Bible. Again, it just might be the most prophesied event in the entire Word of God uh, is those Jews being regathered back to the land of Israel. Uh, and so now, of course, not every one of those prophecies that I have written up there on my community post, if you wanted to go find them, uh, not every one of those prophecies is going to primarily doctrinally apply to when the Lord regathers those Jews at the end of the 70th week to bring them into the millennium. Some of those prophecies doctrinally primarily will apply to when they were uh, gathered out of captivity uh, from Babylon uh, and other things like that. But because there is still an event that is yet future where those Jews will be regathered back to the land of Israel specifically, at the end of the 70th week of Daniel to go into that millennial kingdom and to get that new covenant dumped on them because that event is still yet to take place in the future. Therefore, all of those prophecies, all 49 of those prophecies are going to have application to that one future event. Uh, and so again, it just might be, we say this because we want to make sure it's clear. It just might be the most prophesied event in the entire King James Bible is those Jews being regathered back to the land of Israel. Uh, and so, of course, you come to Matthew chapter 24, verse 31. And it says the Lord, uh, he's going to gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. He sends his angels to gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. And, of course, our post-trib opponents, our post-trib pre-wrath rapture opponents, they're going to come over to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 1. It's going to be the other place in the King James Bible. Uh, it's going to be the only place in the King James Bible where you see, of course, it's talking about the New Testament church being gathered uh, in the context of the rapture of the church. I uh, beseech you by the coming of the Lord and by our gathering together unto him. Uh, so they got a passage there where the New Testament church is gathered in the context of the rapture. And they run over to Matthew chapter 24, verse 31, and they see a gathering. The Lord sends his angels to gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Uh, so they got one. They got one place in a King James Bible where the New Testament church is said to be gathered uh, in the context of the rapture. Uh, but uh, we're going we're to give them a couple passages uh, talking about that most prophesied event in the entire King James Bible where it's going to be a bunch of Jews that are going to be gathered or regathered. Uh, and that is also going to fit the bill for Matthew chapter 24, verse 31. Uh, it's going to be a gathering, uh, as Matthew chapter 24, verse 31 says. Again, the rapture of the church occurs before the 70th week of Daniel gets underway. You bust your neck several times coming through a King James Bible, trying to put the New Testament church in the 70th week of Daniel, and trying to make the elect in Matthew chapter 24, verse 31, trying to make that elect the New Testament church. Uh, and so uh, Deuteronomy, let's get, them, let's get Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 1 to 10. And there you are going to see, pause the video, make sure I'm not lying to you. I just might be lying to you. Make sure, make sure you go check me now. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 1 to 10, you are going to have prophecy about Israel, about a bunch of Jews being uh, brought back from captivity and being gathered back to the land of Israel. And specifically, you are going to see there uh, them going into that millennial kingdom. That is what you are going to see in Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 1 to 10. Uh, so, of course, our post-trip opponents, our post-trip pre-wrath rapture opponents, they got 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 1. They got prophecy there about a gathering uh, of uh, the New Testament church for the rapture. 
Well, we got one too. We got Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 1 to 10. Uh, and that's going to be a bunch of Jews. That's got nothing to do with the New Testament church. That's a bunch of Jews who will be in captivity for the duration of the second three and a half years of the 70th week in Daniel. Uh, so it's one to one. The Bible believer versus the post-trib and the post-trib pre-wrath rapture of opponents is one to one. But we're not going to stop there. We're going to get another prophecy. Again, we got 49 to choose from, so it's not going to be hard to get another one. Uh, and so the next one we're going to get uh, is going to be Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 11. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 11, beginning in verse 14 over to verse 20. And there you're going to get it again. A bunch of Jews being regathered uh, back to the land of Israel to go into that millennial kingdom. Uh, and so it's now now it's two to one. Now it's two to one. The Bible believers got one up on the post-trib and the post-trib pre-wrath rapture of opponents. They got 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. The Bible believers got Deuteronomy 30, verse 1 to 10, and Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 14 to 20. Uh, and of course, we're not going to stop there. Just in case some of our post-trib pre-wrath rapture of opponents, they're coming to the video a little bit late, we're going to get it for them again. Uh, and so, of course, we're going to come over to Ezekiel 36. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 36, beginning in verse 22, down to the end of the chapter, you're going to get it again. A bunch of Jews being regathered back to the land of Israel, specifically to get that new covenant dumped on them and for them to go into that millennial kingdom. That's going to fit the bill just fine for Matthew chapter 24, verse 31, at the end of the 70th week of Daniel, when the Lord regathers those Jews back to the land of Israel to go into that millennial kingdom. Uh, and so, of course, it's a landslide at this point, but why stop there? We're going to give them another one. Uh, you're going to come to Ezekiel, uh, Ezekiel chapter 39. And Ezekiel chapter 39, again, beginning in verse 22, down to the end of the chapter, you get it again. A bunch of Jews getting regathered back to the land of Israel to go into that millennial kingdom. Uh, so, of course, it's a landslide by now. We're leaving these fellas in the dust. I got one verse, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1, where the New Testament church is gathered uh, in the context of the rapture. Uh, but we got four. We got four on them coming through prophecy in the King James Bible about a bunch of Jews being gathered. Uh, and, of course, they are gathered back to the land of Israel to go into that millennial kingdom in the four prophecies we mentioned. But we're not, we're not going to let the poor thing go yet. We're going we're gonna to bring it down the road a little bit further. Uh, and we're going to get five. We're going to get another prophecy in the King James Bible where you're going to have a bunch of Jews regathered back to the land of Israel specifically uh, to go into that millennial kingdom. Again, it's going to be telling you that it's going to be specific to the coming of Christ in Matthew chapter 24. Uh, and again, it's going to fit the bill just fine for Matthew chapter 24, verse 31. Uh, and so it's going to be Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 32, beginning in verse 37, again, down to the end of the chapter. And so we just gave them not one, not two, not three, not four, but five. Five prophecies coming through a King James Bible where you see a bunch of Jews, got nothing to do with the New Testament church, a bunch of Jews being gathered back to the land of Israel uh, to go into that millennial kingdom. And so it fits the bill just fine for Matthew chapter 24, verse 31, at the second coming of Christ, the end of the 70th week, the Lord sends his angels to gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. That's the most prophesied event in the entire King James Bible. That's a bunch of Jews, a bunch of Jews being regathered back to the land of Israel to go into that millennial kingdom. Uh, and so, of course, it boggles the Bible believer's mind that Matthew chapter 24, verse 31 is such a hotly debated passage. Uh, and how our post-trib rapture of opponents, our post-trib pre-wrath rapture of opponents, how they break their necks so many times over coming through a King James Bible, uh, it really does boggle the Bible believer's mind. Uh, how anybody, how anybody can come through the first 39 books of the Old Testament, uh, the 39 books of the Old Testament, of course, are 95% Jewish at least. Uh, it's all about the Jews. Uh, and it's about that coming kingdom for the Jews, that coming Messiah for the Jews. It's about the Jews under the law of Moses going through the things they go through. How they come through the first 39 books uh, of the King James Bible, that Old Testament, that is at least 95% Jewish. Uh, and then they come up to the book of Matthew. They come to the front door of the New Testament where that Jewish Messiah appears to those Jews. Uh, and then he tells his Jewish disciples to not go in the way of the Gentiles, but only go the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Uh, and then they come to Matthew chapter 24, uh, which of course again is the Olivet Discourse, which of course again is the 70th week of Daniel, which of course again uh, is that Jewish 70th week. The 70 weeks are for the Jews. And then they come to Matthew chapter 24, verse 31. Again, it just might be the most prophesied event in the entire King James Bible about the Lord gathering a bunch of Jews back to the land of Israel. 
Uh, and then they read Matthew chapter 24, verse 31. A bunch of Gentiles in the modern day and age in which we live, they have the completed canon uh, of the King James Bible. And they come to Matthew 24, verse 31. Uh, after reading, uh, again, just for reiteration, after reading the 39 books, which are largely Jewish, the 39 Old Testament books, and then they come to Matthew, and they see a Jewish Savior, a Jewish Messiah, coming to the Jews, and then they come to Matthew 24, which is the Jewish 70th week, the 70 weeks are for the Jews, and then they come to Matthew 24, verse 31, which is the most prophesied event in the entire King James Bible, about a bunch of Jews being regathered back to the land of Israel, and they want to try to say, people in the day and age in which we live today, they want to try to say that that is the New Testament church. That's a bunch of Gentiles that are born again, uh, getting gathered back to the land of Israel in Matthew chapter 24, verse 31. Uh, so this boggles the Bible believer's mind. Uh, anybody with a King James Bible that reads it and studies it a little bit is going to see very clearly, very plainly, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that Matthew chapter 24, verse 31 is the most prophesied event in the entire King James Bible, it's a bunch of Jews. It's a bunch of Jews being regathered back to the land of Israel to go into that millennial kingdom. That is what Deuteronomy 31 to 10 prophesied about. That is what Ezekiel 11 verse 14 to 20 prophesied about. That is what Ezekiel 36 verse 22 down the end of the, end of the chapter prophesied about. That is what uh, Ezekiel 39 beginning in verse 22 down to the end of the chapter prophesied about. That is what Jeremiah chapter 32 beginning in verse 37 down to the end of the chapter prophesied about. Uh, and again, uh, this list of prophecies is not exhaustive. Uh, if you want to see all 39 references that I have found, uh, go over to my community post on my channel. And there might be more than that. That's just the ones I found, not even trying to look for them. Just coming across them as I read my King James Bible and writing them down as I see them. Uh, and again, just to be clear, not all of those prophecies are going to be specific uh, about those Jews being regathered at the end of the 70th week of Daniel uh, to go into that millennial kingdom. Uh, but because that event is still yet to be fulfilled in the future, many of those prophecies are talking about that, just like the five prophecies we mentioned in this video are talking about that. Uh, all of those prophecies, all 39 of those prophecies, uh, are going to have application to that future event. They're going to have application to that future event. It is the most prophesied event in the entire King James Bible. There's more, there's more prophecies about a bunch of Jews being regathered back to the land of Israel. There's more prophecies about that than the virgin birth, the crucifixion, the resurrection of Christ combined. Combined. Uh, and so, of course, our post-trib pre-wrath rapture opponents uh, are students of prophecy that ride the short bus uh, of course, they, again, have subscribed to replacement theology. Uh, so what they're trying to do is they're trying to take the blessings uh, of, of the nation of Israel in the future, and they're trying to appropriate those blessings uh, unto themselves, unto the New Testament church. Uh, and, of course, our partial preterist friend, uh, he really rides a short bus. He's got a special place in our heart. Uh, our post-trib pre-wrath rapture opponent that's broken his neck on partial preterism, unlike his own post-trib pre-wrath brethren in his own camp, uh, he's trying to, of course, again, he's trying to put the uh, 70th week of Daniel uh, in the Olivet Discourse as things that already were fulfilled in the past. Uh, so we're going to set him aside for a moment, but we're, we're going to bring him back. We're going to bring him back out in a minute. But of course, our post-trib pre-wrath opponents, besides our friend that has broken his neck on partial preterism, uh, they will acknowledge that the 70th week of Daniel is still yet future, uh, and that, of course, the Olivet Discourse is still yet future. Of course, at the beginning of the Olivet Discourse, the disciples asked the Lord, Lord, uh, when's, when's the temple going to be destroyed? When are you going to be coming? When's the sign of you coming? Uh, and when's it going to be the end of the world? Uh, and so, of course, our post-trib pre-wrath rapture opponents, again, everybody that hasn't uh, busted their neck on partial preterism, uh, like this poor gentleman that we've set aside for the moment, they will acknowledge that where it says the end of the world, it literally means the end of the world. Uh, and so, of course, our, our post-trib pre-wrath opponents, they will acknowledge that Luke chapter 21, verse 20 to 24, is still future. Uh, and, of course, they're just trying to catch up to the Bible believers. As Bible believers, we already know that. Of course, Luke chapter 21, verse 20 to 24 is future. Uh, that is going to be the beginning of Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 7, when the people of the prophet Daniel have a time of trouble for three and a half years. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, and Daniel chapter 12, verse 7. That is going to be when Jerusalem is trodden down to the Gentiles for 42 months. Revelation chapter 11, verse 2. It's going to be when the Antichrist breaks that covenant covenant in the midst of the week. Daniel chapter 9 verse 27, when the Lord brings uh, all armies of the nations against Jerusalem the battle. Zechariah 14 verse 1 and 2. 
Uh, and so, of course, Luke chapter 21, verse 20 to 24, is talking about a bunch of Jews. That's not spiritual Israel. That's not a bunch of that's not a bunch of born again Gentiles all over the world. But Luke chapter 21, verse 20 to 24, unless you wear adult diapers and eat your lunch on a funny farm, that is going to be a bunch of Jews. Uh, and again, our post-trib pre-wrath rapture opponents still acknowledge that that is still future. Luke chapter 21, verse 20 to 24, is the middle of the future 70th week of Daniel. Uh, and so, of course, because Luke chapter 21, verse 20 to 24, is the middle of the 70th week, what you see there in Luke 21, verse 20 to 24, is those Jews going into captivity. I, I believe it might be either verse 23 or verse 24 in Luke 21. And of course, you see the same thing in Zechariah 14, verse 1 and 2. It talks about half the city going into captivity. Uh, and you're also going to get it in Jeremiah chapter 32, uh, in verse 37. And you're also going to get it in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 1 to 10. You're going to get it many times over as you come through prophecy in the King James Bible. In the middle of the 70th week of Daniel, for the duration of the second three and a half years of the 70th week of Daniel, uh, some of those Jews are going to go into captivity. Uh, and they're going to go into captivity among Gentile nations. And so, of course, because they go into captivity among Gentile nations... That is why Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 to 46 is going to fit the bill very nicely for meaning what it says and saying what it means. It's talking about a bunch of Gentiles that are gathered at the end of the 70th week of Daniel, and they are judged for how they treated those Jews when those Jews will have gone into captivity for the duration of those second three and a half years. So, of course, that judgment of the nations at the end of Matthew chapter 25 is to be taken literally. It says what it means, and it means what it says. Uh, and so... Uh, of course, um, uh, at that time, uh, at the end of the 70th week of Daniel, in Matthew chapter 24, in verse 31, the Lord sends his angels to gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Who's that going to be? It's going to be a bunch of Jews. You follow those Jews in the 70th week of Daniel, in the future 70th week of Daniel, and you find out that is exactly where they are going to wind up. They, in the middle of the week, they go into Gentile captivity. They are in Gentile captivity for the duration of the second three and a half years of the 70th week. And then at the end of the 70th week, to fulfill all those prophecies where they are prophesied about being regathered back to the land of Israel to go into that millennial kingdom, to fulfill all those prophecies, that is what Matthew chapter 24, verse 31 is going to be speaking to. It has nothing to do with a bunch of born-again Gentiles going up to heaven. It has everything to do with a bunch of Jews being regathered back to the land of Israel to go into that millennial kingdom to fulfill uh, the most prophesied event in the entire King James Bible. Those Jews being regathered back to the land of Israel. And again, many of those prophecies uh, are going to be talking about those Jews specifically at the end of the 70th week to go into that uh, millennial kingdom. Uh, so, of course, the elect there are going to be the Jews. It's going to fit the bill. It's going to be undeniable that in Matthew chapter 24, verse 31, that is going to be the elect are going to be uh, a bunch of Jews. Uh, and so what we're going to do here is we're going to bring our post-trib pre rap opponent that's broken his neck on partial preterism. Uh, we're going to bring him back out into the limelight. Uh, this fellow, he, he really does have a special place in our heart. This fellow is comical to listen to. Uh, this, that, that, this is what this fellow says. This fellow has broken his neck on partial preterism. He says that we do not, as Bible believers, he says we do not understand prophecy. He says we cannot be able, uh, we are not able to expound on prophecy and say, we are not able to say that prophecy is going to be fulfilled a certain way until we understand what kind of prophecy uh, that that prophecy is that we are talking about. Uh, so we're going to tell this fella exactly the kind of prophecy that these prophecies are uh, when we want to talk about how they're going to be fulfilled. Uh, and of course, uh, some of the prophecies this fella is talking about, he's saying that these prophecies are contingent. Uh, they are contingent on the nation of Israel. Uh, and, then, and that the nation of Israel, they needed to do the right thing for these prophecies uh, in order for the Lord to make these prophecies be fulfilled. That's what this fellow wants to say. He's saying that some of these prophecies in the Old Testament that you're reading about, uh, about the Jews inheriting the millennial kingdom, about the Jews being regathered back to the land of Israel, this fellow wants to try to say that these prophecies are contingent upon the nation of Israel uh, doing, doing the right thing. And because they didn't do the right thing back at the first coming, uh, and essentially, uh, they helped put that Messiah, put their Messiah up on the cross 
because the nation of Israel didn't do the right thing back at the first coming, that therefore all these prophecies we read about in our King James Bible about the Jews in the future being regathered back to the land of Israel to go into that millennial kingdom, uh, this poor fellow, this poor fellow has broken his neck on partial preterism. He wants to try to say that these prophecies are not going to come to pass the way they are written, but they are going to come to pass in some other kind of way, in some other kind of a alternate reality or alternate universe or something like that. Uh, so before we tell this fella exactly how these prophecies uh, are going to come to pass, we're going to first tell him the kind of prophecies these are. Because again, according to him, we're not fit to be able to say that these prophecies are going to come to pass exactly how they're written until we understand what kind of prophecies these are. Uh, so let's, let's give it to him right here. Everybody get out your pen and paper. It's going to be a real deep nugget. The kind of prophecies that these prophecies are that we mentioned, like Deuteronomy 30 and Ezekiel 11 and Ezekiel 36 and Ezekiel 39 and Jeremiah 32 and many other places coming through a King James Bible. The kind of prophecies these are, these are the, these are the kind of prophecies they are. These are the kind of prophecies that are going to come to pass exactly how they're written right on the money. That's the kind of prophecies these are. Uh, and of course, uh, our partial preterist friend, he's broken his neck on the 70th week of Daniel and on the Olivet Discourse, trying to make these things as already having been fulfilled in the past. So to him, Luke chapter 21, verse 20 to 24, it's already been fulfilled. Uh, so of course, what he needs to do is he needs to have a, a good long conversation, not even with Bible believers. Uh, we've left him in the dust a long time ago. Uh, he needs to have a conversation with some of his own post-trib pre-wrath brethren uh, in his own camp. And they will try to tell him uh, they will try to reason with him that, of course, the 70th week of Daniel uh, and the Olivet Discourse is still future. Uh, so, of course, that means that Luke chapter 21, verse 20 to 24 is still future. And so, of course, because Luke chapter 21, verse 20 to 24 is future, uh, that is going to be telling you that, uh, that those Jews are going to get right in the future. They might not have got right at the first coming. They might have wound up putting their Messiah on the cross approximately 2,000 years ago. But in the future, in the 70th week of Daniel, that is the whole point for the bottom falling out for Israel in Luke chapter 21, verse 20 to 24. And for them going into captivity for the duration of the second three and a half years of the 70th week of Daniel. It is for them to repent and for them to get their hearts right. Everything they did not do back at the first coming, every way they dropped the ball, back at the first coming, they are going to get right uh, at the second coming. They are going to get right in the second three and a half years of the 70th week of Daniel. That is the whole purpose. That is the whole point for the bottom falling out in Luke chapter 21, verse 20 to 24. That is when that Antichrist, that Assyrian prophetically, Isaiah chapter 10, verse 5 and 6, the rod of God's anger and the staff of God's indignation is going to be sent against a hypocritical nation against the people of God's wrath. Uh, and of course, if you want more information on that, uh, go check out a video on my channel called Dragging the Post-Tribulation Pre-Wrath Rapture Into the Woods and Burying It Alive. And you get more information on that. Uh, and so of course, uh, again, our post-trib pre-wrath opponent that's broken his neck on partial preterism, he really does have a special place in our heart. He's very comical to listen to. He's going to try to tell us that we're not fit to talk about prophecy and say that it's going to come to pass exactly as it's written uh, because the Jews didn't do their part for the prophecy to come back uh, because the Jews didn't do their part for the prophecy to come to pass 2,000 years ago. But again, that's the whole point for Luke chapter 21, verse 20 to 24. That's the whole purpose for the bottom falling out for those Jews in the future 70th week of Daniel. It's for them to get right and for them to, to repent uh, and get them ready to receive their Messiah. So therefore, uh, at the end of the 70th week of Daniel, all those prophecies, again, the most prophesied event, the entire King James Bible, those Jews getting regathered back to the land of Israel. And again, many times it's going to be specific to the end of the 70th week of Daniel for those Jews to go into that millennial kingdom. All those prophecies are going to come to pass right on the money, exactly the way they're written, exactly to the T the way they are written. That is how they are going to come to pass. That is the whole purpose for Luke chapter 21, verse 20 to 24. Uh, and so, of course, our partial preterist friend, uh, he doesn't even need to have a conversation with Bible believers. He's going to go talk to his post-trib pre-wrath brethren about that. Uh, unlike him, they have not broken their necks on partial preterism uh, the way this poor fella has. 
Uh, and so this has just been a little bit about uh, answering the question that some of our post-trib brethren, our post-trib pre-wrath brethren have about who the elect are in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 31. It's going to be the most prophesied event in the entire King James Bible. It's going to be a bunch of Jews being regathered back to the land of Israel to fulfill that most prophesied event in the entire King James Bible. And for those prophecies to come to pass, the one specifically where it's talking about Jews being regathered at the end of the 70th week of Daniel to go into that millennial kingdom. Again, the five prophecies we mentioned in this video are not exhaustive, but they are there. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 1 to 10, Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 14 to 20, Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 22, down to the end of the chapter, Ezekiel chapter 39, verse 22, down to the end of the chapter, and Jeremiah chapter 32, beginning in verse 37, down to the end of the chapter. Uh, go check out those passages. Make sure I'm not I'm not lying to you. I just might be lying to you. Uh, these are going to fit the bill for Matthew chapter 24 and verse 31. Has nothing to do with the New Testament church. Has nothing to do with the body of Christ. The body of Christ gets raptured before the 70th week of Daniel gets underway. Uh, again, it does not fit to put the rapture of the church at the end of the 70th week of Daniel. You want more information on that? Again, go check out the video on my channel called The Satanic Deception of a Post-Tribulation Rapture. Uh, and so Matthew chapter 24 and verse 31, that elect there uh, is going to be a bunch of Jews being regathered back to the land of Israel to get that new covenant dumped on them and to go into that millennial kingdom. Uh, and so I thank you for watching and we'll catch you the next time, the good Lord willing. Uh, God bless.